Breaking news. Please stand by for another. C2C World News Now current event. Set aside what they were saying about that stuff, that you would hire that person for that job. Donald Trump is returning fire on the GOP. Trump went after Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House on Twitter, claiming the Speaker was a weak and ineffective leader. A number of Republicans in tight races are bailing out on Trump. Trump responded on Twitter saying, the shackles are off and he can now fight for America the way I want to. There is no poll out there that shows Donald Trump won the debate on Sunday night and he continues to pass the damaging audio off as locker room talk. For more on that, let's turn to our panel tonight. Ian Walters of the American Conservative Union joins us and also Brent Badowski, columnist for The Hill. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. I want to play this soundbite from President Obama, who just within the last hour spoke at a rally in North Carolina. He talked about the Trump tape that was released on Friday. Here's the president. You heard what somebody said on tape about women set aside what they were saying about that stuff, that you would hire that person for that job. And the fact that now you've got people saying, well, we strongly disapprove. We really disagree. We find those comments disgusting. But we're still endorsing them. Ian Walters, how big a problem is this? This is a big problem. You know, it, uh, Donald Trump's electoral map uh, is already a narrow one. We've talked about this before, whether it's Ohio, Pennsylvania, North Carolina. And comments like this, even if they were 10 years ago, uh, don't do anything to broaden the coalition. In fact, it makes his path narrower to find that 270 electoral votes that he needs to win the presidency. What do you make about his tweeting war with Republicans? He's going after the House Speaker. He's going after calling it weak leadership. He used the word disloyal. Well, this is, uh, I believe, a potential asset for Donald Trump. Here's a guy who's an outsider. He's not a career politician. His whole uh, uh, juice of success that he's done in this uh, uh, run-up to the nomination has been because he's running against Washington. He's running against the Congress. Uh, and if we can talk about the issues, which are jobs in the economy, keeping us safe from uh, Islamic terror, and uh, shaking up things in Washington, D.C., then he's still got a shot to do this. Okay, so we've seen... First, the House Speaker come out and make his statement on Trump, and most have followed him. Then there was some pushback within the Republican Party, and now Trump's on the offensive. Brett Badowski, are we seeing a political civil war in front of us? Oh, it's unbelievable, is the truth, uh, that you have a lot of Republicans who are deeply offended, number one, by what Trump said, and they are worried about their reelection. They have a problem, and the honest truth is, do they condemn Trump, which is what many of them would like to do, but then the Trump supporters won't vote for them, or do they support Trump, in which case other moderates, women, uh, and, and reasonable Republicans will oppose them. So they get caught either way. The smart move for Trump, which he doesn't usually make, would have been to understand why Paul Ryan did what he did and to let it fly. Now what he wants to do is to have a war with other Republicans, which if I was sitting at 36, 38 percent, I would not be doing if I were Donald Trump. So what's his road to the White House at this point? How, how can he be rehabilitated in four weeks? There is no road and he cannot be rehabilitated. So what's Hillary's strategy moving on? Lay low. That's it? <laughs> in other words, she, I mean, Ian, what do you make of that? How, how can Trump recover? Look, it was just a week ago that we were in Farmville for the vice presidential debate. We're not in a 24-hour news cycle. This is more like a six-hour news cycle. We're uh, 30 days out. Uh, there's still a lot of game left to be played. Let's call it the bottom of the sixth inning. But the Republican Party doesn't seem like it knows how to repair itself right now, that there is really no one out there. I mean, it, it, it is clearly shown that the House Speaker has staked out his game. Mm -hmm. He's told everybody to go home and do what you got to do in your district. I mean, if that's not almost uh, close the fort, we're going to defend ourselves, I don't know what is. That's not winning, is it? There's no question here that the Republican Party is far from united. Uh, uh, and a lot of folks have been asking the question, who's in charge here? Is it the Republican nominee for president? Is it uh, the RNC chairman? Uh, is it Paul Ryan? Um, look, I trust the voters. Uh, I really do think that this is the era of the conservative grassroots activists. And while there have been a lot of curveballs uh, thrown at the media and at the establishment types like us over the past few months, it's going to be the voters that have the last say. Brent, it's locker room talk. He's sorry. <laughs> is that enough? Oh, it's enough to be forgiven in the eyes of the Lord as long as he's not the commander in chief. 
Uh, I have to tell you, Ed, we've both done a lot of campaigns over the years. I have never seen anything like this in my life, never anything close. Uh, I don't think his supporters are deplorable, and I've criticized that. I think he is deplorable. What did you make of the president's comments? The reasoning. Hey, well, he, we're not going to really work with him for campaign, but we're still endorsing oh, it. Look, I love Barack Obama like a brother, but there's no media opportunity he could stay away from. If this tape had not been released, Ian, would the emails be a bigger story on the Clinton part? Absolutely. Those things would be overwhelming the news cycle at this point. There's so much there, it's tough for any single person to keep up so with. So is that his road to recovery, to focus on some of the things that have come out? I think it, I th that's I th not very I, damaging. I think it's twofold. One, uh, it's the vulnerability of his opponent, and so he's got to he's got to go after that. The second part is that he needs to convey uh, a, a rehabilitated character of sorts after okay. this past weekend. All right, Ian Walters, Brent Podowski, gentlemen, thanks so much. This has been a C2C World News Now current event. Stay safe, everyone.